every woman deserves to feel vibrant, safe, loved, and feel her power. The Woman's Vibrancy Code podcast is here for a potent use of your time. We will cover energy, hormones, and libido with episodes that also dive into entrepreneurship, money mindset, feminine power, and much, much more. Introducing Mariah Brown, Yale and functional medicine trained women's health expert, midwife, mom, and entrepreneur. Mariah Brown here. Let's talk about progesterone, but more specifically, let's talk about mood swings, anxiety, menstrual migraines, increase in irritability, fatigue, low sex drive, sleep disturbances. All right. All of this can be related to low progesterone. And so for anyone out there where you're like, oh, wait a minute. Did you say irritability? I have some of that. Did you say menstrual migraines? I suffer from that. So who am I? For those of you that don't know, my name is Mariah Brown. I am a Yale and functional trained certified nurse midwife, which means I'm a nurse practitioner that specializes in OBGYN. And I work now as an online women's health expert. I have the Vibrant Life Workshops, Hopefully some of you have attended a Vibrant Life Workshop. Those are really fun to do and just my way to pour out into the masses. And then I also run the Women's Vibrancy Code. And so I've been working with women, with midwifing them through chapters of change and also running women's health clinics since 2007 as a nurse practitioner, since 2000 as a midwife. And there are so many questions around what is going on here? Why is my menstrual cycle so out of whack? Why am I having recurrent miscarriages? Why am I struggling getting pregnant? Why is my experience of menopause feeling so crappy where all of a sudden I'm biting my husband's head off over the simplest thing and I'm going, my goodness, where did that road rage come from? And so I want to talk with you a little bit about progesterone. This is particularly if you've been diagnosed with PCOS or you are 35 years old and older. So let's talk a little bit about what is progesterone? Why is it important? What are some causes of low progesterone? And what are some symptoms of low progesterone? Then obviously let's talk about some simple ways to actually address that low progesterone and that doesn't necessarily mean going out and getting a prescription, okay? There's lots that we can do now to address it. Okay, so let's first talk about what is progesterone. So it is a female sex hormone, although men have it too, and it plays a really important role in the menstrual cycle as well as pregnancy maintenance. It affects our mood. It affects our weight distribution. There's a lot that it does. You might hear me mention pregnenolone. Pregnenolone and cholesterol are both really important foundations to progesterone being able to be developed. And it is really important for those of you that are still ovulating and having menstrual cycles, it is a really important hormone during the second half of our menstrual cycle, okay? So why is it important? Well, first of all, sometimes maybe you've heard of something called estrogen dominance. Okay, estrogen dominance, we do not like. We don't like estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance is associated with uterine fibroids, estrogen-dependent cancers like breast, ovarian, colon and uterine cancers. It can be associated with really heavy bleeding, heavy cramping, breast tenderness, fibrocystic breasts, menstrual migraines, irritability. I could go on and on and on. And so sometimes in the realm of estrogen dominance, it's because your estrogen is too high. And that's a totally different conversation. We can talk about that. But sometimes it's that the progesterone is too low in relationship to the estrogen. Okay. And without ample progesterone, irritability skyrockets, sleep disturbances can be a real issue where you just feel like your sleep is disastrous. No matter how much time you're spending in bed, you're waking up still not feeling rested. It's also highly associated with our ability to focus. So if you're feeling brain fog, lack of clarity, walking into a room and you're like, wait, why did, where, what was I going to do again? A lot of that can be associated with low progesterone. Okay. Without progesterone, we also can have issues with our thyroid hormone. Okay. We all know that thyroid hormone, this lovely gland right here in our throat is so important for women in particular. It regulates our mood, our energy level, our weight maintenance, 
And it is thyroid is drastically impacted by our sex hormones, particularly our progesterone. Okay. So why is progesterone important for fertility and menopause specifically? Well, like I said, progesterone is that sex hormone that is very important during the second half of the menstrual cycle. Okay. What happens is when we ovulate, ovulation is often referred to as the main event. When we ovulate, that stimulates what's called the corpus luteum to actually start producing progesterone. And in the second half of our cycle, that progesterone is there to hopefully maintain pregnancy if we get pregnant. So for those of you watching this who have been trying to get pregnant and are really struggling, or you've had recurrent miscarriages, there's a lot to that conversation. And I would love to have a conversation with you. I just like, oh, I love helping women get pregnant. But also a lot of it can be that that either you're not ovulating or the progesterone is not rising up enough in order to maintain the pregnancy, maintain that uterine lining. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And then in menopause, where a woman is no longer ovulating at all, progesterone that is low can have drastic impact on our sleep, on our irritability, on our focus, on our bone health right? There's lots going on there. And then for the women in the perimenopausal chapter, which usually starts around age 35 and ends once you've gone 12 months without a bleed, without a menstrual cycle. Well, during that time, there's a lot going on. Our, we start ovulating less often. So now we're not getting the main event that triggers the body to produce the progesterone, but also in general, our progesterone levels will start to go down. And it's fascinating. I often refer to perimenopause as kind of the other end of puberty, where the hormones are doing kind of a similar thing, where there's this last surge of estrogen often and the progesterone goes down. And so often in that chapter, we become more fierce, we become more unapologetic, we also suffer with a little bit more irritability, maybe some more anxiety, sleep disturbances, and so much more. I'm just going to leave it at that. I could keep going and going, but I'm also aware of time. Okay, so reasons you might have low progesterone. Number one is stress, okay? Stress that has such an impact on, so, I mean, so many different things, right? Then stress can be caused from the food that we're eating, the water that we're drinking, the air that we're breathing, but also just the stress of life, okay? Stress of finances, stress of not sleeping, okay? So here we are in this loop where our progesterone might be low, so now we're not sleeping well, which is causing stress, and now our body's more stressed out, and so we're also not producing progesterone. Can you see how that's happening, right? And there's a lot that we can do about it, okay? So maybe it's stress at work, Maybe it's fear of becoming ill or losing a loved one, fear of being judged when you go out in the world based on how you are living in today's world. Stress comes from lots of different places. And chronic stress over time has a really negative impact on our adrenals, okay? Remember, everything is connected, okay? So this goes to our gut health. It goes to our adrenal health. It goes to our thyroid health. It goes to our hormone production, if the body is under high stress, it is always going to choose stress over less, okay? Meaning, if the body is worried about whether or not it is going to survive, okay? I'm being chased by a lion. I'm going to be eaten, okay? The body goes, all right, you know, those lovely sex hormones that you're looking for, you want to ovulate, you want to sleep well, you want to feel happy, you want to have um, less aches and pains in your joints, you want to address your constipation, the body's like, yeah, that can all wait. I have 60 seconds to either be eaten or survive, right? So the body chooses stress over bless. So in that scenario, if you are relating to some of the symptoms I've spoken about, and you're thinking, maybe my progesterone is low, what can we do about it? We can start addressing stress, okay? Maybe it's stress from childhood trauma, Maybe it's stress from simply being a woman. Maybe you are the breadwinner in your family. Maybe you are living in lower socioeconomic status, whatever it may be, the stress is the stress. And so there's lots of things that we can do about it. I'm not gonna go into that today, but it is a lot of what I focus on to give those adrenals the love that they need and help reduce the stress in regard to what we're putting in our mouth, what we're put, allowing in our eyes, in our heart, 
right? And how we are managing the stress levels throughout our day. The other thing I mentioned was thyroid. So hypothyroidism is definitely associated with exacerbating low progesterone. So we need our thyroid to be pumping out and healthy in order to have healthy sex hormones. And when the thyroid is low, now we're in a a not so great scenario. So one in eight women will develop a thyroid condition in their lifetime. And the majority of them go through it actually not knowing. Okay. So if you are one of those women where you're feeling exhausted, maybe there's changes in your menstrual cycle, changes in your weight, um, starting to lose the outside of your eyebrows, thinning hair, brittle nails, hot and cold intolerance, change in your smell or taste, struggling with getting pregnant or recurrent miscarriages, constipation, muscle aches and pains, strange rashes, like rough patches on your skin, any of that, in my mind, I'm going, oh, there might be something going on with your thyroid. And it could also be low progesterone. They go hand in hand. And so maybe you've gone to your provider and they're like, oh, no, I checked your thyroid. Everything is normal. Well, let me tell you, my friend, I went to Yale for my nurse practitioner training. I was taught to order TSH, maybe a TSH with a reflex T4. You don't need to know what that is. Just know that it's far from complete. So if you are having symptoms and you think there might be something going on with your thyroid, I want you to really advocate for yourself, okay? Go find another provider. Reach out to me. Let's have a conversation. Let me help you know how to advocate for yourself and lock arms with someone that's really going to listen to what you're saying and know that, yes, it's the thyroid. It's also the sex hormones. And guess what, my friends? The adrenals and the gut and the liver, they all are playing factors, okay? So we get to go and address this in a systematic step-by-step process, okay? It's a lot of what I talk about in the Vibrant Life Workshop. Um, I do want to say, let's talk about PCOS. And I, I still have some more things to to talk about, but just know that if someone, if a provider has ordered hormone tests and they've done it through your blood, it's kind of a waste of your time. Okay. It's not giving you the information that you're looking for. So if that's the route that's been taken and you're like, oh, my hormones are normal, keep looking. Okay. Better route is ideally your urine through a Dutch test, sometimes saliva. Okay. For those women who have been diagnosed with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. There's a lot of different factors that are going at play there, but one of the big things is low progesterone, okay? And that's partially because you're not ovulating as often. It's partially because there's blood sugar dysregulation. There's a lot going on, but just know if you've been diagnosed with PCOS, I want you to really listen in and reach out to me. Let's have a conversation because we want to work to help naturally get your progesterone levels up help you ovulate, get your blood sugars in better management. And also part of that is referred to what's called hyperandrogenism. So your testosterone levels are higher. So cysts on your ovaries isn't necessarily always a negative thing. If you've been diagnosed with PCOS, polycysts, and maybe you're having a little bit of extra hair growth on your mustache, on above your lip, along your jawline, around your nipples, around your abdomen, maybe increased weight around your abdominal girth, maybe a little bit of male hair balding, maybe a little bit of darkening of skin in your armpits, inner thighs, or your neck, irregular menstrual cycles, any of that could be associated with PCOS. And having a cyst on your ovary does not concern me necessarily. Estrogen dominance, on the other hand, Let's tackle that in a big way and figure out what is causing the cyst on the ovary and how big did it get. I don't believe that we get to just go, hey, doc, here's my symptom. Order my lab. What's my diagnosis? Here's my drug. Okay. The functional medicine approach is we have to address the gut health, the adrenal health, the liver health, the thyroid health, and the hormonal well-being. And then the body goes, there's my balance point. Those rashes have mysteriously gone away. That exhaustion, poof, is gone. My moods feel stable now, okay? I'm not going to take away your irritability, okay? Women are meant to feel irritable at times. Feelings are meant to be felt, okay? There are times in our menstrual cycle or our moon cycle where we are supposed to be more creative, less social, more social, more turned on, less turned on. I don't want to take that away. That adds to our ability to check in with our intuition and serve the world greatly and check in with ourselves. And I do want to make sure that the pendulum isn't swinging so far. What else can be a cause to low progesterone? Simply age. If you're 35 years or older, 
you likely are having a decrease in your progesterone. So that's why many of these symptoms increase, particularly that age 35 to 55 range. And there's a lot that we can do. Okay. Prolactin can be a factor. I'm not going to go into that, but if you're breastfeeding, I already mentioned briefly estrogen dominance. It is a real thing. Wasn't this episode amazing? Let's distill it down to key takeaways and action steps. So once again, recap to the symptoms that can be associated with low progesterone, insomnia or sleep disturbances, low libido, mood changes, especially anxiety and irritability, breast tenderness, headaches and migraines, particularly menstrual migraines, meaning the migraine starts right before you bleed or as you're bleeding, weight gain, low libido, I already mentioned that. I had to mention it again. Irregular menstrual cycles, short cycles, mid-cycle spotting, estrogen-dominant cancers such as um, breast, ovarian, uterine, or colon cancer, infertility or recurrent miscarriages, hypothyroidism, and lots, lots more. So a couple things. Let's get into some solutions, and then I'm going to wrap this up. How do we increase our progesterone? Yes, you can go get a prescription for the pill or hormone replacement therapy. It is not my go-to, especially if you listen to the interview that I did with Sarah Hill, or you've read the book, My Brain on the Pill. It is striking to see what we're learning about progestins, which is the form of synthetic progesterone that is in most hormone replacement therapy, as well as contraception, unless you're doing bioidentical progesterone, that's different. But pharmaceutical progesterone, we are learning that it wreaks havoc on the adrenals. For some reason, it sends the adrenals into hyperdrive, and now they're pumping out cortisol without that negative loop. So now the adrenals are exhausted, okay? So I'm not going to be suggesting prescriptions, okay? If you're working with someone like me or you're working over time to see what we can do to bring up your progesterone with diet, lifestyle, supplementation, mindset change... And then we've tried it for, say, six months. Maybe then we can have a conversation around bioidentical progesterone. But there's lots of other things that we can do in the meantime. So number one, stress management. Number two, healthy fats. So eating your avocados, your nuts, your seeds, getting in coconut oil, MCT oil, taking your vitamin D as in dog every day. For those of you that have been listening to me over the years, you know that I'm a big advocate of adaptogen elixirs and drinking your adaptogen elixir every day adding in a protein source such as collagen and a fat source such as MCT oil, coconut oil, even olive oil, avocado oil. Remember that cholesterol is not all bad, okay? All hormones come from cholesterol, okay? It's, it's gotten a bad rap, but we don't want to take our cholesterol too low. And there's been a Nobel Prize winning research showing that it's not just high cholesterol, but it's high LDL in at the same time high stress that causes problematic atherosclerosis and the cardiovascular concerns, okay? We have to remember that some cholesterol is really good, okay? There is a supplement called chaste tree berry. It's also known as Vitex. For years, I was intimidated and humbled by it and rarely suggested it. Over the years, I'm getting more and more comfortable. It is powerful at bringing your progesterone up. It's good to use in collaboration with a provider or working with someone like me who knows how to do it. And we can try certain times in your menstrual cycle and you want to give it a good three month try, but it is good at what it does. There are also some progesterone creams that tend to come from wild yam sources. Sometimes those can be helpful from a supplemental perspective. Green tea is a great antioxidant. It's also been associated with increasing progesterone. I mentioned your adaptogen elixirs, okay? Many people go adaptogens. What's an adaptogen? Adaptogens come from the plant, mushroom, botanical kingdom. They help the body better adapt to stress. So rhodiola is one that has been associated with helping to maintain better menstrual cycles and increasing progesterone. And you can often get like mixes of adaptogens in tea form, tincture form, supplemental form. I like to drink, um, I do like Rasa or Four Sigmatic in my teas. And then sometimes I'll add some extra specific adaptogens. And then it's such an enjoyable experience to have my hot adaptogen elixir throughout the day. 
Zinc is another one that is important. And particularly right now, I'm recording this during the time where um, the pandemic is still alive. And there's been a lot of research around benefits of zinc. And so if you're adding zinc, oh, by the way, you're also supporting your progesterone level. Magnesium is another one. Magnesium is one of those minerals that is so vital for lots and lots of processes. Just know that most of us are deficient in it. One, because we're not eating enough plants. And two, because many of the plants that we're eating are grown in soil that's depleted, mono uh, cycling, so that the farmers are really just kind of honing in on one plant rather than rotating crops. And all of that leads to less magnesium in the actual food that we're growing. So if you're able to, grow your own produce, whether in the soil or aeroponically. I love my tower garden. I've been growing my own greens and herbs for, gosh, 10 years aeroponically. B6 is another one that's been associated with progesterone. And I'm not going to get into a whole lot of it, but if you eat chickpeas and liver or organ meat, fish, egg yolks, dried beans, nuts, bananas, prunes, potatoes, cauliflower, cabbage, avocado, those are great seed sources of B6. If you do supplement with B as in boy vitamins, it is important that you ensure that they're methylated. I'm almost done. Vitamin C, I'm going to just say with vitamin C, my preference is if you're supplementing with vitamin C, that it's liposomal, figuring out the right dose for you. Just increase your dose until it gets to a point where your stool is loose, and then you want to go one dose below that. And that's a good dose for you for vitamin C, at least for that time period in your life. And it has been associated with supporting hormonal balance as well as increasing in your progesterone. So hopefully this has been helpful to at least talk a little bit about what is progesterone? What does it do? Why is it important? How can we naturally increase our progesterone levels? Once again, Mariah Brown, I'm a women's health expert online. I serve women all over the world and I get to give you the handholding, the roadmap, to really address your underlying exhaustion, sleep disturbances, so that for particularly driven women, you can feel turned on by your life, your lover, and yourself, and more profoundly pour into the dreams that you're wanting to achieve, whether it's career development, showing up as an amazing member of your community, mother, wife, whatever that may be. And I get to do that through a systematic process where I give you accountability, support in nutrition, supplementation, the proper testing, as well as mindset support and old trauma release. And ta-ta for now. Thank you for listening to the Woman's Vibrancy Code. Connect with us and take the first step to transforming your energy, hormones, and libido at thewomansvibrancycode.com. Cheers to your zest and vitality. Make sure to follow for weekly power-packed value.